Muscular Anatomy Tutorial where we are going to continue talking about the ruminant stomach and uh, previously we talked about the external structure of the different compartments of the ruminant stomach in this tutorial we will look at the internal service and uh, describe the structures which we can see internally but at the beginning let's go quickly and refresh our mind about the external structures on the left view and the right view of the ruminant stomach. This is the left view of the sheep stomach where we can see here the ossificus. Uh, in the left view, we can see actually here the uh, biggest compartment of the ruminant stomach, which is the rumen. We can see the reticulum here cranially or cranioventrally. On the outside surface of the rumen, we can uh, identify, we can see the left longitudinal groove, this one here. Here we have the left accessory groove. Here the cranial groove, the caudal groove, and the left ventral coronary groove why the left torso coronary groove is not that developed in small ruminants. The left and right longitudinal grooves divide the rumen into ventral sac and dorsal sac. Here we can see the caudoventral plane sac and this small one is the caudodorsal plane sac. The caudodorsal blind sac is not that developed in small ruminants. The dorsal border of the rumen is called the dorsal curvature, while the ventral border here is the ventral curvature of the stomach. Let's move now to the right side to look at the right view here of the ruminant stomach or sheep stomach. In this view, in the right view, we can see actually all compartments of the stomach, including the rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and the true stomach, or the abomasum, this one here. On the outside surface in, of the room in, in the right view, we can see and identify the right longitudinal groove, this one here. From the right longitudinal groove here, we have the right accessory groove. They meet each other and form finally what's called the insular ruminants. Here we have the right ventral coronary groove, while the right dorsal coronary groove is also uh, not that developed. Here we have the caudal groove. So this is the ventral sac, this is the dorsal sac, caudoventral blind sac, and this small caudodorsal blind sac. And here in the middle of course we, we have the insular ruminants. Here in the right view also, uh, we can see the omesome, which is like pin shaped in small ruminants. This is the abomesome, the, or the true stomach. Uh, the abomesome uh, has the greater curvature here, and the lesser curvature. To the greater curvature, we can see the rest of the greater omentum. Why, from the lesser curvature toward the liver, we have the lesser omentum. And now let's look at the internal surface of the different compartments of the uh, ruminant stomach. And let's start with the rumen. So what we saw on the outside surface as a groove here, it forms internally what's called a pillar. These pillars are muscular bands, uh, is actually a collection of a uh, lot of smooth muscle cells uh, to form these pillars. And good news for all of us that they have exactly the same name like the groove. So if this one here is the longitudinal groove, uh, that means this one here is the longitudinal pillar. 
and here for example we have the ventral coronary pillar and now let's look how the mucosa the internal surface of the rumen looks like so if you look at the internal surface of the rumen here we can see what's called the ruminal papilla the ruminal papilla are there to increase the internal surface of the uh, rumen or in other words to increase the absorption surface of the rumen the ruminal babula uh, are vary in size uh, between the different compartments of the rumen so look at this area here and compare it with this one here so here we can see that the ruminal babula are very developed and long comparing to this here for example the ruminal babula are very developed and long in the ventral sac for example uh, this area here represents the ventral sac where there's a lot of food and fluid and that's why there is a function for this papilla while in the dorsal sac where uh, there is just gas uh, there is no function for this papilla so let's look at the uh, rumen here so um, this this is the ventral sac as you can see here is filled with fluid and food particles while the dorsal sac is always like empty, filled with gas. And that's why the ruminal papillae and the dorsal sac, they don't have really function. And that's why they are not really developed or uh, very short, as you can see here. And now let's put them on each other, as you can see here. This is how the ruminal papillae looks like inside the uh, ventral sac so uh, as we said before here we have uh, uh, food particles we have uh, water and that's why we need more papilla or developed papilla for absorption and now let's move to the next section which is the reticulum and look at the internal surface of the reticulum and this is how the internal surface looks like or the mucosa of the reticulum looks like so uh, if you look exactly here we can see this uh, uh, very interesting like a uh, honeycomb uh, pattern um, they are formed by the uh, crista reticuli or the reticular ridges here exactly here we have the junction uh, between the rumen and reticulum this area here so the internal surface of this area here um, looks like this here where we can see the ruminal papilla and here we can see the mucosa of the reticulum uh, the honeycomb shaped uh, structures And now let's let's move to the third part or third chamber of the ruminant stomach, which is the omasum. This one here is being shaped in the small ruminant. Uh, the internal surface uh, of the omasum looks like this here. So the internal surface or the mucosa forms a lot of what's called the omasal lamina. The omasal lamina are muscular lamina. So the tonica muscularis or the muscular layer inside this uh, lamina uh, is very strong. So the omasal lamina uh, vary uh, in size. So we have very long uh, omasal lamina and sometimes like, like that one here is very short and sometimes middle size lamina uh, the food can uh, stuck between them and uh, the main function of uh, this part is water absorption the last chamber of the ruminant stomach is the abomasum we said before from outside even from outside we can see this uh, white lines here uh, the white lines from outside represents actually f internally uh, what's called the uh, spiral folds spiral faults or abomasal faults this is the faults here the abomasal faults or spiral faults are there to increase the internal surface of the abomasum and um, these faults uh, will stay like visible even if the abomasum is full with food and so we finish this tutorial see you on the next one.